But million dollar question, is volatility here to stay? Volatility has been increasing over the past week or so. And today, this morning, we saw a gap up only to come down, fill in the gap. Now we're starting to get a lot of conflicting information like this article right here, main engine of US economy, consumers showing no signs of sputtering. But then we look at this article right here, McDonald's to offer more value meals to entice struggling consumers. So which is it? Are the consumers struggling or are the consumers full steam ahead? Now, if we look right here, McDonald's earnings revenue missed estimate as consumer pullback worsens. But then we look at this one right here, McDonald's earnings were terrible. Why the stock is rising now. Now, as we look at McDonald's, they came out with terrible earnings this morning. And what do we see? McDonald's was McDonald's was up. 3.79%. And that's why I keep telling everybody, it's not important of what the news is. It's more importantly, how does the market react to that piece of news that comes out? When we look today, the fear and greed index is right here at 47. It ticked up a little bit closer towards greed, or should I say towards equilibrium right here at 50. And this week we are action packed with a lot more earnings to come along with some key economic data points that could provide even more volatility for this market. Tomorrow, we got to keep our eyes on AMD, Microsoft, Starbucks, PayPal, SoFi. There is a lot of companies reporting earnings. If we want to look at the expected big movers tomorrow, PayPal, AMD and Starbucks. But let's take a look at Microsoft as well. Because when we come over and look at a chart of Microsoft, we know Microsoft has benefited from the AI hype. And today, Microsoft was able to close up. But if you notice, Microsoft opened way up here, only to come down closing near the low of the candle. And we got to ask ourselves, is this something we should be concerned of? Or is this nothing more than the market trying to put in a short-term bottom to start getting a bid on the way back up? We look at NVIDIA, the king of all AI stocks, was down 1.34%. We take a look at SMCI. Today, SMCI was down 2% on this session. We take a look at AMD. AMD was down 0.17%. But look at the selling tail on top of this candle. Now, I want to warn you guys. When you first look at this candle, you're like, oh, this has to be bearish. However, we want to look at this in the context of a downtrend. If you get an inverted hammer-ish looking candle, this could be signs of a reversal in the market. Now, I'm not saying the bottom in the market. I'm saying a tradable bounce in the market. Then when we look over to the left, what do we also have? We have we're just below a prior swing point. And what, what I like about this is a lot of stops are probably sitting right below that. The market sweeps the stops, then tries to firm up. Now it can wreck any of the lower level shorts, maybe trying to make a run back towards 160.42. Now, what else could be the catalyst for the market going up? other than earnings coming out. Tomorrow, we have a couple news items to contend with. 9 a.m., S&P, CS Composite, 20-year HPI, consumer confidence at 10 a.m., Jolt's job openings at 10 a.m. Then tomorrow, I wanna pay very close attention after the bell. It's gonna be later in the night, but the BOJ is gonna have their monetary policy statement. Now, why this is important is, what if we learn that the BOJ starts dumping US bonds? That would be devastating out here for stocks. Then on Wednesday, let's not forget, Papa Powell is gonna be taking the podium at 2.30 p.m. So it's gonna be very, very fun out here this week. If you guys like the volatility out there, then there should be plenty more to go around. We come over today, look at the dollar index. Dollar index was on the rise. Once again, up 23 and a half cents on the session. We take a look at the precious metal gold. Today, gold actually having a candle of indecision. You can see a wick on the top, wick on the bottom. This is a spinning top type of candle. And we gotta ask ourselves, are we gonna be able to firm up at this level? If we start breaking below this swing point, or more specifically, below the 78.6 Fibonacci retracement level, which comes in at 23.45, then it's highly probable we're going to come down towards this swing point over here. And if we breach that, watch out for the middle of this minus development area and then possibly flushing all the way down to 2211, which is the next high volume area on the profile. Now, with a little bit of relief out here with inflation, what do we see? Crude oil was on the swing down once again, down a dollar and 32 cents. And you know what? People are starting to think about the elections coming up. Politicians know if they want to get reelected, it's going to be very hard with higher crude oil prices. So is the government trying to suppress crude oil prices or is crude oil going down simply because there is a demand issue? AKA a slowing down of the economy. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a big thumbs up. 
Now, if we look today at the IWM, the small caps, they've been ripping and roaring. And today, the small caps were down 1% on the session. To me, this looks still looks like it could be a bull flag pattern. Big flag pull up here. We have the upper level consolidation. I wouldn't rule that out just yet, but the MACD is up here at extreme elevated levels. We look over here at the diamonds. Diamonds today forming a hanging man-ish looking candle. It was down 47 cents on the session. We take a look at the QQQs. Qs today were up a whopping 88 cents on the session, but in after hours, down 42 cents. We look at the four hour chart. And we talked about this morning. It looks like the MACD is trying to firm up here a bit. On the one hour chart, MACD indicator has already been crossed to the upside. However, on the 30 minute chart, this is where I warned you guys about in this morning's video. I said, anytime we have a lower level consolidation or this could be flipped to the upside if we had an upper level consolidation this rule would, would apply as well but in reverse so in this case lower level consolidation macd is depressed all the way down here makes it back to the zero line we got to be very very mindful that this could be nothing more than a recharge point to go ahead and sweep these lows and guess what anybody that's been long up and around this area where do you think the stops are likely hiding we probably have several stops sitting right below 455.61 i want to make everybody aware apex 7 a massive 80 percent sale off all their valuation accounts passing as little as one day and you can also get a 150k account for only 40 dollars you get a 250k account for only 40 dollars and you get a 300k account for only 40 dollars so if you want to take advantage of this offer use the link in the description box down below and use the promo code Mike at checkout. Then as we come over and look at the futures markets, notice where we're at. We are now getting back below value area low. So we were unable to get the rotation up towards that structure breakdown point. However, I still want to leave that level marked off on our chart. We talked about this morning, basically candle wick to the candle body. The market has broken through that level. I expect the market will come back and retrade that level at some point in the near future. The question I'm asking myself is, are we going to try to flush below these lows, anywhere below 18,883.75. Do we flush down there, try to run some stops, then potentially head up higher? Now, one thing I would wanna mention when we're talking about these lower levels, if we come over here and we bring book map into the equation, look what we have right over here. We have 75 contracts sitting where? Right below 18,900. And we gotta ask ourselves if those people get long and we flush the lows, will it wash them out of their position or will that be enough to fend the market up? Meaning we start to come down there, the buyers are able to scare away the sellers and we go ahead and push up and out. Now, as we come over and look at the daily profiles, notice we are closing below value area low. Now in this morning's video, which I drop a video, each day the stock market is open, which is another reason you wanna make sure you're subscribed to the channel. But this morning we were dealing with these white lines, yellow line and white line here, the overnight value area high, point of control and value area low. And this morning I said, we come back down below value area high. Guess what? We need to target the point of control. We need to target value area low, and then we can look to target some of the profile levels out here from Friday. But I also said, if we start breaking below value area high on Friday, we start getting back above it, which we did over here, then we wanna go back and retarget the overnight volume profile levels. And just to put this in perspective, all the way up here from the high down to the low, we had a straight meltdown of 265 points a day. Then on the move right back up, we ran up a matter of 232 points. There is a lot of points to be made when the volatility expands in the market. Now, speaking of volatility expansion, today we actually saw the VIX was up 22 cents on the session. And when the VIX rises, it doesn't normally just poof, go right down to where there's no more volatility in the market. And the fact that the VIX was up and we come over here and we look at how the indices fare, the Dow was down 49 points, but the NASDAQ was up 12.32 points. The S&P was up. 4.4 points. The Russell 2000 was down 1% on the session. And if we look at advancing issues versus declining, declining issues were at 55.6, advancing issues only at 41.4. So that was showing us that the overall market had a lot of signs of weakness. Then as we look at the sectors across the board, the ones leading the way, consumer cyclicals, followed by communication services, real estate, then utilities, healthcare, and the big loser today was energy, which I think all of us that have cars that take gas, we're very happy to see lower energy prices out there. Now, as we come over and we look at the SPY real quick, the SPY, what do we see? MACD indicator on the daily chart looks extremely weak. But when we look at this chart, we got to ask ourselves, we're right here near the high volume area on the composite profile. Do we start getting back above it and potentially come all the way up here, starting to fill the gap as we come over and we look at the four hour chart? MACD indicator is starting to base out at lower levels. 
on the one hour chart, we've already been making our way towards the zero line. Now, similar to what we talked about with the NASDAQ, if this gets towards the zero line, watch out. We could be doing nothing more than a recharge point for another move lower. On the 30 minute chart, the MACD indicator got to the zero line, flattened out, and that's exactly what price has done. Look at this lower level consolidation that we've had. And the question is, are we gonna make it up towards gap support, this structure breakdown point, or potentially fill in the gap, or are we simply gonna roll all the way back over and essentially try to flush out any of the long stop loss orders that, that got long near the lows over here? If you look at today's profile, you can see the high was lower than the high from the prior day. The low was higher than the low from the prior day, which means we have an inside day, very similar. We basically have back to back inside days. Now, eventually we are gonna break out or break down from this pattern. And when we look at the futures markets real quick, this one area right up here really has my attention. One, it's kind of a minus development area within the profile, but also it's a structure breakdown point in the stock market. You can see we came right back up towards this high volume area today, but we weren't able to push into that area just yet. Maybe the news out there tomorrow will be enough to push us up there. And let's not forget, we have an open gap in the market, in the futures markets above us. In the futures markets, we are not as susceptible to gaps as normal stocks and ETFs. So anytime you see gaps in the futures market, you most certainly want to pay attention to those levels. But right now, we are still trading above value area low, which means from a weekly perspective, we're looking for the market to rotate up higher towards some of these higher prices. I don't know. We make it all the way up to 5610 out here this week unless Papa Powell really throws some fuel on this fire. We come over and look at the daily profiles. Notice we're closing right near value area low, which comes in at 5500.25. The point of control will come in at 5508.75. Value area high will come in at 5517.75. Now, if we start breaking below value area low tonight, then I want to target these candle bodies and then maybe a runner down here towards the candle wicks. Now, the candle bodies come in about 5495.75, and then the wick will be down here about 5481. Now, anytime I'm looking for some of these targets, I like the front run them by a, a tick or a couple ticks or so. If we can break below this area over here, then we gotta be open to the idea that maybe we're gonna come all the way down and flush out the lows. But before we get past that, we wanna go ahead and pull our Fibonacci retracement level. Swing low up here to the swing high. Notice what we did today. We came right down to the 50% level. If we come down here again, we're probably gonna break a little bit lower coming all the way down towards 5472, which is gonna be the 61.8 Fibonacci level. We breach that. The 78.6 will be the next area. If we break that, it really increases the odds that we're coming all the way back down to retest the low and potentially go even lower from there. Now, if you'd like to learn how to trade double bottoms using order flow, watch this video right here.